What's up guys, CPMod here back with another mini review of the Samsung 850 EVO M.2 drive family. Just like our 60 second breakdowns, short sharp and to the point but longer like our reviews. So let's jump into it. And these are the drives. In the design department these are pretty basic with an all green PCB and VNAND sticker on it. It's not going to be winning any design awards anytime soon but does get the job done. It measures in with the 2280 length of 80 millimeters and uses the M.2 interface and that's kind of it on the design front. There's really not too much here. It's basic and simple and best hidden underneath a heat spreader or inside of a laptop. Specifications wise we are looking at 120 gigabytes through to 1 terabyte using the Samsung MGX controller on all the versions except for the 1 terabyte one where we'll be finding the Samsung MEX controller. We also do find ourselves 32 layer 3D VNAND technology and also to Samsung LPD for DRAM for all the editions except for once again the one terabyte edition where we're finding actually LPDDR2 DRAM which is kind of interesting to see on a higher tier trim. We also do have max endurance of 150 terabytes written to these drives and a five year warranty. This guy also too uses the M.2 interface as well as the M SATA interface depending on which version you do buy and do note that these are not the same as NVMe drives. Whilst it does use the same M.2 software it as an NVMe drive, it is not going to be running at the same speeds, meaning, well, you're not going to be seeing the same performance. But speaking of performance, let's take a look at some of the performance numbers and see how these drives really stack up. And taking a look at them, they're actually relatively not half that bad, and they do stack up pretty closely to their paper numbers in the real world. Whether you're copying files or doing some synthetic benchmarks or just playing some video games, they're not actually half that bad in the performance front. Do keep in mind that these are not NVMe drives, so we'll be getting same as SATA speeds rather than NVMe speeds. So do keep in mind when you are looking at those numbers that that is the reason why. Heat was also to another thing that I didn't really have too many problems with because it's not going to be running at super super high end speeds. The controllers and memory modules aren't really going to be heating up too much and I found whether I had a heatsink on or off I really didn't have too much problems in the heat department. It ran a little bit warmer than ambient but at the end of the day with the airflow of the GPU over the top of it it really wasn't doing too much bad here. And if you were to go ahead and throw it in something like a thin and light laptop, you should also do have no real problems here, thanks to again the lack of heat issues. On the plus side, this guy is actually not half that bad in the price department, thanks to the non-NVMe specifications. It brings larger SSDs to a smaller form factor, thanks to the M.2 as well as M SATA options, and also do has nice solid performance for that lower price point. However, with that being said, there are definitely a few drawbacks if you are looking into buying these drives including no NVMe support for those of you who are looking for it. The design does look like rubbish, so if you are putting it into a show PC, it's going to stick out like a green sore thumb. And overall, the endurance is a little bit low for some of us out here. We do want more than 150 terabytes, and whilst not exactly everyone's gonna be writing 150 terabytes to their drives throughout the life of their computer, at the end of the day, there are other options on the market that come in relatively same price points, but offer a lot more durability. But speaking of that price point, coming in at 39 US cents per gigabyte is actually fairly respectable in how much you'll be paying for the larger drive options. And again, if you are looking for these drives to bring large storage to your small and thin and light device, it's actually not half that bad of an option. But who is this drive really for? Well, I'd have to say anyone who wants to get into the M.2 form factor. Whether you're looking at upgrading your existing system or just bringing some big storage to it, these drives are really great on the price point and also too decent enough on the performance front not to blow your wallet away. Finally enough, I've been running this drive on one of my computers in the studio for quite a bit of time now, and it's actually been really, really great. I've had no issues with it, and I have to say a bit of a thumbs up on this little budget drive. Nevertheless, guys, let me know what you think of this drive down in that comment section. If you want to pick up one of these drives for your systems, I'll leave all the different variants being M.2 and also to M SATA and all the different capacities linked down in that description box. So if you want to pick one up again, down there, go ahead and grab one. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.